this is Amber from Beyond Film School and in this video we are getting some great advice from professional editors on how to get started as an editor and what to keep in mind while coming up in the film industry. Before we jump into the world of editing, please subscribe if you are new to my channel and if you want to stay on the up and up, be sure to hit up that notification bell to get all the videos I make on the film industry. And if you want to donate to Beyond Film School and help me make more videos, please hit up that PayPal link. It really helps me out and thank you to everyone that has contributed to it already. For this video, I interviewed a bunch of editors that are working professionally and they were done over Zoom, so you know the deal. Please be forgiving of any video quality, sound issues, any of that, but I'm pretty sure it's okay. And also, one of our editors is a mom, so you may hear some kid noises around, so don't be alarmed. If you're trying to break into editing, I know you have this question, how do I even start? Where do I begin? And let's start with Nina. She's gonna lay it all out for you. So first rule, definitely network. Go to every single event you possibly can. Meet as many people as you possibly can. Because if you don't know anybody, then you're not gonna, you're not gonna be considered for anything. So <laughs> number two, just always get better at your craft. And th the way that you do that is by practicing. Not necessarily studying, but, um, but just being aware of things. So, you know, I'm always watching tutorials. God, if I had the resources that are available on the internet today, when I was a kid, I'd, I'd be somewhere else probably right. now. <laughs> right, yeah. Get reading about story, understanding story, and part of practicing, as I mentioned before, is, um, is just editing as much as humanly possible. Not only are you gonna get better at your craft by editing, movies of all types on all different formats of all different qualities but you're also going to learn how to deal with all sorts of different people and um and that is such a huge part of being an editor is managing expectations and mm -hmm. managing some egos sometimes depending on the show <laughs> and uh and making the best you know uh product possible uh while still maintaining the director's vision be a good person to work with you know don't let your ego get in the way keep yourself yeah. in check and um definitely remember this is not my film <laughs> yeah i think mean, that's one thing i've always told like people in like my pa training class or i'm like no one wants to deal with someone who has a bad attitude or someone that's an asshole <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that's a surefire way to not get work <laughs> yeah exactly now let's break it down a little further what exactly should you be doing you have decades of experience so it's like it, it was a different world back then when you first started but i mean as you're seeing everything transform how mm -hmm. do you think it is like the best way for someone new getting into editing well it, shoot stuff on your phone and cut it <laughs> i mean that's, I, that's really great <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like pick a genre and just start doing it i mean i i was not I, i've never really been traditionally trained you know i i've always had some kind of like when i was a kid i had you know like 16 17 i had like a, a vhs video camera you know, and I would yeah. cut, you know, in college, I was cutting, you know, machine to machine um, linearly because that's all that existed. Where now it's like, it's like, well, okay, pick a genre. If you want to do a document, yeah. do a documentary on your dog. You know, no one might watch it, but you'll get the skills yeah. and by mistake. What would you suggest for people who are trying to break into editing? Just get as much experience as you can. You know, if, if you can't find work, give yourself work you know it's uh it's not hard to just you know grab your phone shoot some stuff and and start putting stuff together so basically edit everything you can get your hands on and let's talk about something that is outside of just cutting learn as many aspects of it as you can editing i feel is just just part of part of part of the equation you know learn at least the basics of after effects learning photoshop is also kind of a big part of that. Learn at least the basics of coloring. Definitely learn at least a little bit the basics of audio mixing. I'd probably say of everything, probably audio is my kind of my my least uh, knowledgeable area, but uh, I'm definitely always learning and always improving. And uh, I think the tools are always improving and making things easier. Go on YouTube, look at tutorials, don't be afraid or embarrassed to, to look at that stuff. That's why it's there. That's why people make that content. Yeah. And uh, pretty much anything that you're trying to figure out how to do, an answer exists. So 
Um, don't be afraid of having problems and asking for help. You're not going to learn and grow if you don't have problems. It's it's really all about problem solving. There's always something you can learn, but what about a helping hand on your journey to becoming an editor? What would be some top tips from you for new people trying to break in? So stop in the bottom. Find editors that or companies and say, hey, I want to be an editor. So is there a way that I can be an assistant editor and start like, hey, I can prep the project for you. That way I can learn from things from you. Um, that's what happened with my assistant editors. They were from full sale and um, they sent their resumes to me and said, hey, I want to be an editor. And um, so I'm like, okay, cool. Let's get you on board. And they would do stuff and I'll tell them, hey, do it this way. This is how I do it. So you can take this as your own workflow. And um, so you became more of a mentor. So I suggest getting a mentor. That's a big key thing. And it, it jump starts your career as well. Because I did have a mentor in, high, in college. And I, I learned so much so quickly because I had someone there telling me, hey, don't do this. Do that. Do this. You can do it this way. Well, I think you can do better. So like it's just so much um support and mentoring that you definitely need at the beginning because editing is a very personal um job because you're the one that's putting everything together you're the one that makes the final picture for everyone's work so everyone depends on you and i know it's a little pressure job but at the same time be open-minded if someone gives you feedback don't take it personally yeah um be open-minded to, okay, so the client wants this, I'll do it this way, just for the client. I know you don't agree with it because you have your own way of thinking, but most of the time, the video is not really yours, it's the producer. Yeah. Finding a mentor is really, really tough. I get that and I know that. But don't be afraid to reach out to people. Hit people up on LinkedIn, Instagram, their DMs, Facebook, everything. Don't be afraid to reach out because you never know who's out there and ready and willing to help you. Get out there and start contacting folks. But what about the life and work balance? What would you suggest for people trying to be editors? One thing a lot of people don't consider, especially when they're young, is quality of life. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, I can't agree with this more. I, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's true because, um, for example, why did I end up going into commercials? because there's a lot of boutique companies where it's a lot of more human relationships. I'm not dealing with a giant nameless, faceless company, you know, where the finance, the, their finance department is a whole other place I'm negotiating with this person. And the issue with that is you lose that human factor and they just want efficiency. So above all, they want work, 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 which makes sense. But at the same time, uh, you know, that for some people, it's, it's bad. It, like, it, it affects you. You become depressed or, you know, you overwork. So a lot of young editors are like, I want to make feature films. I want to work with, you know, yeah. the equivalent yeah. of David Fincher. Or, <laughs> yeah. And, and, that's, and that's great if you have that passion. But just, and I never apologize for your passion. Like, if you have that drive, go for it. Uh, but don't forget about your quality of life, your health, your, your balance between working and also pursuing your own creative interests because otherwise that passion will burn out and fizzle out in a couple of years and suddenly you're not 21 but suddenly you're in your late 20s or even in your mid 30s and you're like fuck i, I didn't yeah I do. yeah i didn't do anything <laughs> yeah you have to make sure to keep your health and happiness in mind but like nina said in the beginning of this video do not forget to network, it is super important. And Dennis jumps into this a little bit further. I'm lucky in the sense that yes, I have a few very good re client relationships, but I recommend for anyone at any level to always apply for new jobs, new clients, because you never know when a company goes down. Like I've been doing this for a while and I've seen at least 10 companies, worked with 10 companies that no longer exist. Uh, so don't, don't have one stable client because you might be like, great, you know, I make a good salary a year just from these one guys. I don't need to stress <laughs> and meet new people and suddenly they're gone and you're caught with your pants down. So no, constantly network. 
Networking is super, super important. Even when you're an established person in the industry, I even network still. Everyone is always constantly networking, making relationships, building connections. Okay, I really hate the term networking. It feels kind of like, like very shallow and vain, but you know, form relationships with people. Build those bonds. It's very, very important. Starting out and even when you're established, you're constantly on that networking hustle. And if you want to learn more about building connections in the film industry, I have a video on that and please check that out if you're trying to figure out how to build relationships and connections. Now we have one last note from Cissé about something a little bit more personal. When talking about compensation, it's, it's just, it's interesting what people think that you're worth, your skills are worth. Um, yeah. People don't take into account that you're using your own devices or you're using your own subscription to Adobe or Avid or whatever, they don't take that into account and that's something you have to account for yourself. Um, also the skill, it's not an easy skill um, to like learn on a whim. Editing is a software, it's a different language. So I mean just really learning or understanding your value as an editor and really just trusting yourself I, or believing in your skill set. I, I think I struggled with that uh, before I got like my first job um, and the 48 hour project really gave me that um, confidence that like, Hey, you do know what you're doing. Yeah. And then, and then like going into teaching in the spring, it definitely, um, I was worried I didn't have anything to bring to the table for my students. And I was blown away as to how much I was able to give them as a, like, um, what I was able to teach them. Trust yourself um, and don't think that like you're not skilled at what you do. You probably know more than the person hiring you. I cannot, I can't thank Cissé enough for what she said. Knowing your worth is super important. Be confident in your skills and know that you are enough and great at what you do. If you're looking for a book recommendation on editing, I highly recommend The Art of the Cut by Steve Holfish. Definitely a lot of great information in there. He's talking to a lot of top editors and what it is, their daily lives, what it is like to be an editor. So definitely check out The Art of the Cut. That link will be below for you. So that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, maybe hit me on Instagram, Facebook. I am available for you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please comment below. So that is it for now and I shall see you next time.